Good evening, my viewers. Very honored tonight to have Frank Catalina, the mayor of Peekskill, on with me. George, it's a pleasure to be here again with you. It's always great to have uh, one of the leaders of Northern Westchester. Frank, you've been in office uh, six months as mayor of Peekskill. How have you found it so far? And what do you feel some of your accomplishments are? Well, um, it's about what I expected. You know, it's. it's, it's 90% of it is great, and there's always that 10% of that political sniping that I, we could all do without. But there's going to be a certain degree of that, especially when you're a minority party mayor. But um, for the most part, um, it's been about what I expected. A lot of problems, a lot of solutions, and a lot of our ideas are taking hold. And we're very happy with the progress that we've made. A lot of good is happening in Peekskill, too. I just want to bring up something yesterday. I'm a senior citizen at Peekskill. I was down the Riverfront <clears throat> Green, and we had a lovely senior concert and senior day. Do you want to talk about that, Mr. Well, Mayor? Well, you had the, uh, the what's called the senior picnic. We've had it every year. Uh, last year, the prior administration, Mayor Foster, um, in trying to balance the budget on the backs of seniors, uh, did away with it. And um, you know, I don't think that for the couple of dollars that we spend to take something that the seniors look forward to every year. Uh, to take that away, I thought it was short-sighted and you know, kind of mean-spirited, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, I'm not here to cast blame and uh, look back. It's not a Republican picnic or a Democratic picnic. It's just the seniors picnic uh, that we didn't have, but I campaigned and I vowed that I would reinstate it. I vowed that they would have their picnic, even if I had to pay for it out of my own pocket. And I'm just glad that we were able to uh, get staff at City Hall to uh, knuckle under and find the nickels and dimes it takes to uh, give them back their picnic. It's their picnic, not ours. So um, I, I believe, as John Kennedy used to say, it's, there's no Republican answer or Democratic answer. There's just a, the right answer, and you get moving on these things. Look, we've had a lot of problems in the past. I'm not here to cast blame. I'm here to accept responsibility for those problems and to fix them, to leave it better than I found it. And that's what I'm doing. And yesterday we had a fine local talent singing. He sounds like a lot like Frank Sinatra. He sure Doug does. Ferroni and Doug Ferroni. Doug um, Ferroni, uh, Peekskill boy. The, the whole Ferroni family has just been a staple in our community Ferroni's forever. Ferroni's Deli, right? Ferroni's Deli, his brother Al. Um, just a tremendous family, backbone of Peekskill, and um, like many families, they make up the tapestry of what we are. Peekskill, my kind of town. My kind of town. I rewrote some of the words and gave it to Mr. Ferroni, and he was nice enough to sing it and give me credit for that. So well, I want to salute him. Make sure him. you get some of the royalties. But I that. don't want royalties. You know <laughs> okay. that, Mr. Catalina. Um, development in Peekskill, how is that coming along, and what do you see in the future? I see great things coming in the future. We, um, I spent a lot of time, uh, actually since even before taking office, meeting with people that are interested in moving forward in Peekskill. It started with Lou Lanza when I met him in, in the fall of last year, when I was running for actually a year ago, uh, in the spring of last year. Um, he came into town, he had bought one building, he met me. Uh, he had bought one building and he had some difficulties with the prior administration and he was so um, uh, enthusiastic about supporting me that I had my campaign headquarters in, one, in the building that he bought. And when I won, he was so enthusiastic. He's gone out and bought five buildings in wow. Peekskill since I became mayor. And, um, you know, I'm not taking credit for it, but if you talk to him as to why he invests in Peekskill, one of the reasons he'll give you is the openness of the administration, my administration, and my willingness to um, welcome in developers and get things done. And wasn't he a great restaurateur in Midtown Manhattan, or do I have a mixed up? He is, up no. He's and he's going to open restaurants, right? He's got an almost 35, 40-year history of three main restaurants in the city. Uh, two of them, I think, are still, he's still a partner, and uh, he's got a tremendous background in that field. He has a farm in Garrison where he lives, so a lot of his products are homegrown. He has a stand at the farmer's market, and he has homegrown homemade uh, syrups and honey and uh, 
his specialty is barbecue sauce, and it absolutely is fantastic. That's another great thing about Peatskill, the farmer's market. I, I just heard you just had a grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony yeah. in case the visitors who who listen to me all over the world and watch my show in 40 cities in Westchester that my show go to. When is the farmer's market in Peatskill? And, uh, uh, it's every Saturday, and it's doubled in size from last year. And if you go there, the products are just, you know, I went there to cut the ribbon. I didn't plan on, on spending money, and I think I spent almost $200. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, homemade cheeses oh. uh, at Lanza's, Lanza's uh, stand, uh, fresh fruits, fresh homemade bread, um, and of course... I've tried pickles there that were delicious, pickle licorice or whatever you say. Yeah, it's that. just a... Uh, and the cheeses. It's a great excellent. event, and people should come down and, and check it out. And I, I hear we have a great thing on Sundays in Peatskill, a, a flea market, and I hear you may be cutting another ribbon soon. Well, it's about time to open up the uh, flea market for this year. And um, I've been invited to cut the ribbon, and, and I'll do that. You know, it's yes. part of the job. Sure. Um, these are things and that occur every months. year, and we should welcome them back every year. They bring people and traf foot traffic into Peekskill, on a, especially on a day like Sunday. But one of the main things I've done for the downtown is uh, we ran on a campaign of opening up, making a, um, a closed, closed division street during the uh, Saturday to Sunday. So we closed division street every Saturday afternoon, and the restaurants come out and put their tables outside, and it's a little like um, Soho. It's just a beautiful environment. I came into town on a Sunday night. I had been away, and it was 9.30 at night, and the street was virtually packed. I just got on a, a Sunday comment night. before you came in. This is an aside from my director, Jim Brooks, how much him and his wife enjoy going <clears throat> down there Saturday and Sunday night. And it's a free <clears throat> free entertainment, no, no charge, and you can have restaurant under the stars there's a, there's a um, <clears throat> there's an old saying that president reagan used to say it's not the government that doesn't make things great it's the people that make things great and if government would just get out of the way and let the people do their business that they know better we'd all be better off for it and that's exactly what we did we closed the street let them put the tables out on the street have a pedestrian walkway and the, the restaurants got together and hired the band that provides the music. So it's free to us, the public, wow, so but it's not, there's no cost to the city for that. Wow. And they, they pay, each of them pay a, a money every week, and they have a, a live, live entertainment for their tables that are outside. And it's just a wonderful thing. They're all doing well. They're doing a lot better than they did last year and the year before with this closed pedestrian mall. And it's just a, one of those things where... Um, I ran on it. It was my idea, my campaign. The council voted in favor of it, and I'm very thankful to, for them for supporting that, and we got it done. Um, I can tell you about development. I mean, we have, um, uh, I think, five, four or five new restaurants going in on Division Street, wow. so it truly is going to become a restaurant row. But, um, you know, I, I, I criticized Mayor Foster about um, bringing in a new tenant into an existing building is not development, not the kind of development that I'm talking about. And I'm pleased to uh, uh, hint, because I can't make the announcement yet, but we're talking to major developers who are going to do great things down on Lower South Street, on, um, down at the waterfront, mm -hmm. and uh, all over. And, you know, in Peekskill, uh, we have uh, on Central Avenue, Herman Peritsky. I contacted him in yes. Florida. He's back. He just appeared um, at the work session this past Monday. That's going to be a uh, $13 million project. It's going to employ 50 to 75 construction workers, wow. and it's going to be home to about 30 units. Um, that's on Central Avenue across the street from Zepps. Phil Miller came out, dusted out his, his plan from 12 years ago, mm -hmm. wants to do with other partners a $50 million project right on the waterfront, million-dollar mm -hmm. condos. And we'll bring these proposals forward, and um, you know, if, if the council is willing uh, to change Peekskill in a positive way that I believe they should, then they'll vote in favor of it. And if they are against development, they'll vote against it. Well, I think a lot so I, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not a Republican idea or a Democratic idea. It's a good idea to expand our tax base, bring in people that can pay a lot of money in taxes to provide the services for the rest of the community and to develop the waterfront in a way that it has not been developed over the past and couple of years. And it is such a beautiful waterfront. 
me being a retired person, I go down to the Riverfront Green and to see sunsets down <clears> there and how beautiful it is. And I understand in the future, not only breweries will be down there and other businesses, but creameries may be coming, uh, all kinds of things to go along with our new boardwalk that's being put up in Pizza. Yeah, some people think that if you build a park, people will come to it. And to a certain extent, that's true, but they're not going to come from Cortland and Yorktown to go to your park. I believe the way you get real development is to put residential feet on the ground, put residential units down there on the river. And I've been to Tarrytown, I've been to oh. Irvington. People are paying a million dollars to be on the river. And we have a beautiful waterfront. How about my old home city of Yonkers? Have you been down to the waterfront yeah, I have. there? I have been. With Capelli and They're some doing of a wonderful the major, Ratner and some of the major developers. Is, and you know what they did in Ridge Hill? They were even, one of the developers is even building a firehouse for the city. <clears> and it's not costing the taxpayers <coughs> any money. Well, that would have been nice. But, you know, we, um, talking about our firehouse, we, we took the old plan that was being advanced by the prior administration and they've worked on it for, they've worked on it and studied it and worked on it and studied it again and studied it again and studied it a third time and a fourth time and they came up with a 36,500 square foot building at a cost of about 18 to 19 million dollars. Um, I ran on a platform that said it's way too expensive for the city in our financial condition and quite frankly I think it's too big for the size of our city and our department. Um, we have now come to an agreement with the firemen, with the building committee, and it's been approved by the departments, and we are moving forward to construct a 30,000 square foot building. So from 36,500 square feet down to 30, which is a reduction of almost 20 percent, and that 18.5 or 19 million dollar cost is now down to 10.3 million. Sounds like you're fulfilling your uh, campaign promises. I, uh, and in full disclosure, I have to tell my audience that I am a Peekskill resident. I care about my city very much. I don't like them wasting money. And if something is too extravagant, it should be scaled down. And we shouldn't take private property. I don't know how you feel about that, Mr. Mayor, the building. Well, we fine. can take private property if we pay fair compensation and reach an agreement with the owners. Yes. But I am absolutely against exercising power under eminent domain. That's what I mean. Um, I'm not saying I would never do it, but I'm, I'm adverse to it. <clears throat> people that have watched our meetings notice the change in the meetings, where people have the right to speak, and if they come out and they go to work all day and they go home and have dinner and put the kids and get their homework done and then run down the city hall because they have a concern. I don't think we should care. we I don't think we should stop them after two or three minutes because right, the bell rings. Right. And you they, don't stop them. Well, let I them talk. That. Let them that we're there to hear that's the only form that they have to hear. By the way, one thing politicians forget once they get into office, <clears throat> the voice of the people and who put them there. When 2,000 people tell you they don't want a firehouse as big as that, and the politician don't listen, that's when they get voted out of office. That's when what happens. A thousand people tell you they don't want a methadone clinic, and you go ahead and pass it, even if your handprint isn't on it. People remember that at election time. Like I said, those problems are in the past. We're working to correct the problems that we've inherited, and uh, we don't seek to, to assign blame. We no. seek to accept responsibility. We were elected to take care of the problems. And Mr. Catalina, one of the important elements in Peekskill is the artist community. Absolutely. There is some concern there that commercialism is coming in, but we're not going to push the artists out. Uh, they, we they, love the artists, and they do a great job, and they enhance Peekskill. You want to <clears throat> expand on that. I'll say this Mayor. once and be very clear about it. Peekskill is an artist community. It is. They're a fabric of our community, and they're not going anywhere, and nobody's forcing them to go anywhere. Right. But they are a commercial entity. They have to sell their goods. Of they course, have to sell their to goods make to make money, and they're not supported by the city directly financially. But we welcome them here and we welcome their studios, but they are a commercial entity. And, you know, I think we have to expand the uh, downtown zoning ordinance to allow other people to live in the downtown besides artists. Because um, since 1991 or 1992, when that artist district was created, right now, today, we have 72 certified artist studios. That's great, but it's it's not a great track record since and 1991 or 1992. Mayor, I know you like to put asides in your... Uh, commentaries and, and speeches. One of those artists painted a picture of my cat for me 
and I presented that to my wife as a Valentine present, and she's still and very happy with with that gift. And see, if you didn't have an artist in the community, you can't have things like that. Well, I have Her several name's pieces. Inga, by the way. I have several pieces. Uh, Jean Dematzis did a, a portrait of my office building when I was on South Street, and that still proudly hangs in my office. Um, I have, you know, I've supported the artist community to the extent that I can, and um, I always will. I mean, but I believe that we need to expand the downtown so that landlords and building owners have an incentive to uh, renovate those vacant buildings and get feet on the ground to support those restaurants and to support the artists, quite frankly. And Mr. Mayor, you know <clears throat> I've been very active in the tax area. Really? You keeping, have been? Keeping taxes down in Peatskill. Yeah. And commercial businesses coming in would expand the tax base and take the burden off of the hard-pressed homeowners. <clears throat> I not, I not, feel. Not, not commercial people that come into vacant yeah, buildings because no. those buildings are being this is, I'm talking about new construction and I'm talking about big things mm -hmm. and um, one of the things I campaigned on was that I thought Peaksville had available housing stock for young young people that oh, can't yes, afford yes. the rents in New York City and that if we could bring in attract employers I, can you think of the last time Peaksville attracted an employer that employed 20 to 30 people full-time full-time permanent jobs You've been here a long time. 25 years. When was the last time a new <laughs> business came into town, built a building, operated their business, and had 25, 30 employees? I can't think of it. I can't think of one either. In fact, we lost Fleischmann's in the early 70s. And I see what Yorktown is trying Hold to Hold on. Oh, I think we I'm got sorry. one. We have one. We oh, have we an do? employer. He's in the city now. He's not in the city now. He's coming to the city. He's talked to the planning and development department, and we're looking forward to... Uh, having him make a presentation to the Common Council uh, for um, a building and uh, permanent employees of uh, 25 to 30 employees, something that will be primarily done weekends and bring in up to 500 people per weekend. It will wow. fill up and, and actually we'll probably be building another new hotel just to support that wow. business. So these are exciting times. Um, those 25 or 30 people that are going to be working there can find affordable housing in Peekskill. They're going to be young people. They're not going to have children. Uh, they're not going to tax our school district. It's, it's, not going to, it's just a wonderful time to be open-minded and to bring these people in. I bring them in. Even if I don't think the council will support them, bring them in. Let them say no. Let them explain why uh, they, would, they would vote against that. But like I said, you know, I'm not, the, the council has been pretty good. I mean, we've been getting everything that we've proposed that's reasonable we've gotten. Um, little things and big things. Little things like I ran on opening the dump every every Saturday. <laughs> every Saturday. Do we still have to pay the twenty-five dollars at once, well, or is they, it five dollars a shot? I put it up as a resolution to open the dump every week with no fee. Well, that's good. With Council no broke it up. Oh, okay. They voted to keep the dump open every week, so I got half a loaf. Well, that's good. And they did not vote to waive the fee. Oh, okay. So I mean, I'm not crying the blues. I'm just saying these are the things that we ran on, and these are the things that we were able to deliver. And They're Mr. good for Peekskill. Mr. Mayor, as a citizen of Peekskill, yes, I have a dream. A great man once said he has a dream that I don't have to go to Cortland or Yorktown to shop in a major store. Do <clears throat> you see on the horizon uh, some day in the future that we could uh, attract a Home Depot or a uh, Costco. Yorktown, do you see what they're doing? The, their Chamber of Commerce and their, their town is actively pursuing a major store which will provide hundreds of jobs and thousands of dollars in uh, tax We are, I am, to the I am actively pursuing uh, just that kind of development. Something that looks like the Cortland Town Center. Wow. And, and, and this, this, these are big ideas that will change the face of Peekskill forever. What a shot in the arm. will change the face of Peekskill forever. It will change the way surrounding communities look at Peekskill. And you'll have people from Briarcliff Manor and Croton coming up to Peekskill to shop. People from Yorktown and Somers coming west to Peekskill to shop. People from Stony Point and Rockland County coming across the bridge to come to Peekskill. No more bad news about Peekskill. We're Frank, not... I'm hearing a lot of good news about that restaurant district that one blocks Division Street there where the Quiet Man <clears throat> is, 12 Grapes, La Valletta. 
people are coming from all over and saying what a wonderful place it is to come on a Saturday night or a Sunday night. The out-of-towners I'm talking about. That's a, um, or to the Paramount. That's a great block. And, um, you know, they, the restaurant uh, row was well underway when I took office. But um, it, it was the crown jewel of uh, Mayor Foster's campaign. But there's 20, 21 or 22 stores there, and they had about five vacancies. That's about a 20% vacancy rate, yes, and that was on her best block. Right now, today, uh, there are no vacancies. The, the vacancies that are there are under renovation to be occupied. At least three new restaurants are coming in. Actually, I think four new restaurants are coming in on that block. So it's, it's, it's really taken off. And, you know, we don't say, well, we already have a seafood restaurant. We don't want it. I want everything. You, you want to you wanna come in and have another Italian restaurant or another Irish pub? And the, this one that's under construction now is an English pub. So you have the English on one side of the street and the Irish on the other side of the street. It's, it's all great. It's all good for Peekskill. And here's something else, another suggestion, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Riverfront Green. I see in other towns like for Plank, they have a lot of benches there for people to sit down and enjoy the park. And organizations like the Rotary uh, donate these. And I'm wondering if we could pursue that in... Uh, I, listen, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in favor Lions of that. Lions Club. Uh, Maybe some less, less statues at, at $150,000 a piece and <laughs> or more 75. benches and park picnic benches and tables. I'm shocked there hasn't been a statue put up for George Pataki, our ex-governor uh, uh, who made Those a statues are a lot of money. You know? Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I think we need less statues and more um, user-friendly facilities such as picnic benches, right. um, barbecue pits things like that where people can, uh, why not put a dock out there and attract 50 boaters on a they, weekend? Right. You oh, know. I like that little boat that's there right now that does the moonlight, sunlight cruise. The evening and, star. Yes. Well, you know, it's... I'm it's, thinking it's, of featuring them it's on great, one of my but future why, TV shows. It's such a great idea. Why do we limit it to just that boat is my point. Yes. Why not put, put, a, put a portable dock out there that you can put out seasonally that will attract 40 or 50 boats to come in here and, and use... And use the restaurants, the mm -hmm. Peekskill Brewery, uh, the Yellow Brick Cafe. And I'm sure if you put a dock out there with 50 boats and, and you fill it up on weekends, by boaters going up and down the Hudson River, always stop and you, other restaurants will develop down there. You have to create the foot traffic and the demand and the developers will come. Mr. Mayor, I also want to ask you about Monday and Wednesday nights at Riverfront <clears throat> Green. Do we still have the entertainment there? Or? We do have the uh, summer concert that, that's series. A good thing for I don't to have know. any of the details. Yeah, You'd have to go to we, the city's website. We do for have that. them, right? I think it's starting up around now, yes. or it started up in the past week yeah. or two. Because I've been to Cold Spring, and how beautiful that is to sit out and hear. Uh, but that's all Cold Spring has. Right. But we, we have. We have event, big events every oh, weekend. Oh, right. Like. And, but we got to bring in a creamery, too, downtown. Oh, you and the so creamery, yeah. people with children uh, come to, to, to our thing and make it friendly for families. And one thing we can never do down there, we can't ban dogs from going to Riverfront Green. I've heard on but we can make city people, council. We can make people yes. clean up after their Or dogs. keep them in a spot in, in the back. Yes. Right, right. Absolutely. And... What a sad event that we don't have a Peekskill celebration on a uh, day anymore. Every town <clears> around <throat> us has a day that they celebrate just for that town. These Coral. things are virtually impossible to just start up. And I know. It's, you know. People said, well, you didn't have it well, last year. It just bring it back. It you can't bring it money. back. I mean, the, the Peekskill celebration was privately uh, funded mm -hmm. and privately run, and right. they had a, full -time, a woman that worked full-time year-round just on yeah. that. The city can't afford that. But we are working very hard on the set, my idea of the 75th anniversary committee. That's um, nice. And they're going to have a major event down at the Riverfront Green. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, uh, we're, we're combining with the Chamber of Commerce because it's their 150th year anniversary. But when, we, when both the city and the chamber working together to bring a huge festival to Peekskill next year, 2015, great. that is something that can be renewed, I think, relatively easily for the following year, and then hopefully we'll have the, uh, we'll reconstruct what has been destroyed. Now I do a show in Yorktown, Yorktown uh, yeah. Legislators Update, where I ask a question or two from the people. <clears throat> and somebody asked me today, are we going to have an Italian festival in Pete's Gillish? We are. We are. We are. They seem to think we weren't going to have one. 
We're having an Italian festival. Oh, that's great. We have an Italian mayor, and we're having an Italian festival. <laughs> now you're an Italian mayor. How about in the future having an, a European festival with German food and Russian food and Czechoslovakian you, uh, food? You bring the people that want to sponsor that and run it. You bring really? them in, and we'll approve it. We'll approve. We approve anything that's reasonable, anything that's good for our, our people, anything that's good for Peekskill, anything that attracts people from surrounding communities to enrich our business community and to feed into the artist community. Uh -huh. we, we're all for that. We're not saying no to anything. But one thing I think as a taxpayer in Peekskill, if they have, let's say, 100 vendors, they should pay for a lot of the costs, like the DPW cleanup or the pol extra police that have to be hired. If they charge each vendor a $100 uh, and they had a 100 vendors, that would pay for that. That's well, just a suggestion. One of, the, one of the big costs are, are police. And, you know, the, the costs are, are pretty uh, high. Yes. But what people, what these um, sponsors of these events can do is hire private security, yes. probably at a lot, a lot right. cheaper rate. Right. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, Pete Skill is on the move from Pete what Skill I is on the move. And I just want to uh, do it. we got about three minutes left. I want to give a shout out to AIG Insurance Company. And uh, Lisa Brannigan, one of their vice presidents, has been in touch with me and uh, discussed very uh, carefully with, you know, insurance and the, and the importance of people being insured properly, their life, their home, their property, and you, you make sure you have sufficient insurance. Uh, we had, you know, very terrible, terrible cases, clients of mine that ha suffer a casualty loss or a death in the family, and they don't have proper insurance. Something you brought that up. I so just I, had a broken water pipe in the basement. Would have cost me $5,000, yeah. but because I got homeowner's insurance, it's covering Right. Well, I'm personally, I'm loaded with insurance, but <laughs> I'm, not, I, you know, I, I, I'm not advertising for any no, particular no, person. No. I just want to thank Lisa Brannigan for uh, her help in explaining to me the importance of me continuing those coverages. And I would urge everyone to be properly insured for the sure. sake of their families. You don't know this, one of my fields that I worked in was in the insurance and investment oh, really? field in my younger days. And uh, yes, insurance is very important. It's great. But we're just about at the end of the show. Is there anything you want to say in closing? A phone number where you can be reached or a website or? My, uh, my phone number is uh, very, I'm very accessible. 914-760-1570 is my cell. I'm always available to be reached. Um, uh, anybody who wants me knows where I'm at. My law office is right downtown. I'm here every day. Across from no, the Paramount I'm not Theater. In, if I'm not in my office, I'm in my office at City Hall. Um, and I hear you're on the phone 24 hours a day, seven well, not days. Not 24, but... Well, if you're needed uh, during the snowstorm or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I have spent a lot of time with the DPW guys. I've seen you riding in a DPW truck during the snowstorm. I did. Storm. I've been throwing some garbage, too, <laughs> just to get the feel for it. But with that, this has been my uh, feature that I do called Greet the Leaders. Cablevision has Meet the Leaders. And Mr. Frank Catalina, the mayor of Peekskill, has been... Uh, I've been honored to have him tonight, so thanks again, George, Frank. thank you so much for having me here, and thank it's your always viewers an for honor. support. It's always an honor to have the mayor on at Pete's Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.